This is Exodus 20 and 14. It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. I'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, by Shem Dash, Barak Thumb, double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone who teach and rule well and peace and salutation to the elect Akim out here during this fight, pushing this word with faith, hope, and sincerity. So I'm going to go into um, Exodus, the 20th chapter in the 14th verse, where it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. And for uh, a great deal of my life uh, before coming into the truth, um, when I read this verse, uh, because of the uh, wicked uh, philosophy and wine of Esau, the so-called white man, um, most of our people, including myself, before coming into the truth, regarded adultery as just a, a physical act between a man and a woman. But as you grow in this truth and, and you grow in understanding through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Shai, you start to understand that as it's read here, as Moses was talking to the children of Israel, and I'm going to start here at the top, it says, And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy power, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, <clears throat> out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And then we jump down to verse 14, where it says, thou shalt not commit adultery. So that committing adultery, as I'm going to get into the word, is a spiritual act. Because physically, okay, a whole nation of people cannot have sex with other gods. OK, which is the reason why it goes into thou shalt not make any gra uh, graven images. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them to serve them. OK, and it talks about remembering the Sabbath. OK, um, and, and the reason why all of this is discussed towards the Sabbath of Yahweh by Shimei Shai and six day uh, six days thou shalt labor and do all that work because on that day of rest, is to give honor to you, how by Shimei Shai. Then it goes into honor thy father, father and mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So that adultery is against Yahweh by Shimei Shai. And I'm gonna bring out a few scriptures that kind of go into it. But I'm I'm gonna start. Matter of fact, you know what? Since I'm doing all this raw, let me see here. I'm just gonna bring out this word here. Strong's H, 5003. Naaf. Naaf. Okay. Now it says um, adultery, adulterer, adulteress. Okay. Uh, adulteress, women that break wedlock. All right. It says to commit adultery, to commit adultery, usually of man, always with, oh, always with wife of another. Adultery of women idolatrous worship. Now this should be number one. Okay. The idolatrous worship that should be number one before the physical act. Okay. Because when you think about the Salaki, when you think about the act that was in the garden of Eden, okay. That adultery was not, um, physical. That adultery was spiritual. OK, believing in the concepts and the the philosophies of Esau, the so-called white man. There wasn't another physical woman in which uh, Adam, OK, uh, had intercourse with. It was a spiritual fornication. And I'm going to bring out um, the reason why I'm, I'm uh, drawing that that parallel. It says to commit adultery, adultery figuratively. To apostatize, adulterer, adulteress, um, commit adultery, woman that breaketh wedlock, because a man cannot break wedlock. Okay. Um, so this is what I had read, which really is is the point that I want to bring out, and then I'm gonna close out with a, a few scriptures. It says, to commit adultery, use both of the male and female, because male and female can commit spiritual fornication which is adultery going back to Exodus 20 and 14, which says thou shalt not commit adultery. All right. 
but I'm drawing a parallel here. It says, followed by a uh, to commit adultery with a woman, okay, which is really secondary. And then it has Proverbs 6 and 32, Leviticus 20 and 10, Jeremiah 29, 23, in the same manner as to commit fornication. See? In the same manner as to commit fornication. Now, most people think fornication is with a man and a woman because that's what Esau told you adulter adultery is. However, what does the next uh, sentence say? It says, in the same manner to commit fornication, it is applied to the turning aside of Israel from the true Yahweh to worship of to the worship of idols. OK, and it says here because rebellious Israel commits adultery. OK, so let's read just a couple of these verses here. And, and, and this kind of gives the uh, distinction of what I was talking about earlier when it says thou shalt not commit adultery. So that commandment wasn't talking about thou shalt not commit adultery. Uh, well, actually, let me rephrase my statement. When it says thou shalt not commit adultery, it is talking about spiritual adultery and physical physical adultery. However, the spiritual was before the physical. OK, because then when you read in Leviticus 20 and 10, it says, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife. And, and as you read and as you uh, grow in the spirit of these scriptures, you'll realize that Yahweh made a clear distinction between thou shalt not commit adultery spiritually against him and thou and, and the man that committed adultery with another man's wife. It will always reference committing adultery with the wife or committing adultery against Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. OK, so for an example, um, let me see here. OK, Proverbs six and thirty two. But whoso but whoso committed adultery with a woman lacketh understanding. OK, now that's dual fold because, of course, physically, if you commit adultery with a woman, you lack understanding. But if you spiritually commit adultery against your how by Shemiah Shai, you also lack understanding because women are, are personified in the scriptures as philosophies of the heathen nations or idols, something that lust or that builds an appetite for you to go off against your how by Shemiah Shai. It says he that doeth. It's like he that doeth it destroyeth his soul. Um, there was another one here. Oh, here we go. This is Jeremiah chapter three, verse eight. And I saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding Israel committed adultery. Now, is that physically or spiritually? That's spiritual. OK, but it also happened physically as well through those acts. OK. It said, I had put her away. So once again, here's your how by Shai comparing Israel to what? A her or a woman. OK, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce. Yet her treacherous sister, Judah, feared not, but went and played the harlot also. All right. Um, let me see here. Uh, yeah, we can read Jeremiah 3 and 9. It says, and it came to pass through the likeness of her whoredom, talking about Israel, that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks because the worshiping of idols is physical in nature, but it's spiritual uh, initially. So, so Lord willing, I'm, I'm being clear on what I'm trying to say, because really it's, it's a, um, it's a dual act, but initially it starts spiritually in your, in your mind when you go away from your, how by Shemiah Shai. Okay. Um, is there anything else I wanted to bring out? See, oh, this is this is tough. Matter of fact, this is the one I started with because uh, I was reading here in um, Salaki. I was reading here in e Ezekiel and I'm going to start here in Ezekiel uh, 16 and I'll start at 35. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Yahweh, because thy filthiness was poured out and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers and with all the idols of thy abominations and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them 
Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure and all of them that thou hast loved with all of them that that thou hast hated. I will even gather them round about against thee and will discover thy nakedness unto them that they may see all thy nakedness. OK, basically being ashamed. OK, because we didn't have the truth as a cloak of protection. And this is the point in, in Ezekiel 16 and 38. And I will judge thee as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged and will give thee blood in fury and jealousy. So now when you get into this word here, wedlock, OK, because that's the same word in which I looked up for adultery. It says as women that break wedlock. OK. H 503. Strong's H, 5003. Na'af. Na'af. Okay. Now that's the same word as Exodus 20 and 14. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Okay. Na'af. Okay. So, so yeah, really that, that's the point. The point is I just wanted to express that majority of the people, when they read the Ten Commandments and they say, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, that initially they think of this word adultery as in the physical form first, when in essence it's the spiritual form first because it only applies to the nation of Israel, which is the reason why I brought out that definition. Matter of fact, let me just scroll back up. Okay, which says, in the same manner as to commit fornication, it is applied to the turning aside of Israel. Because only the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh by Shemiah Yahweh Shah were given to Israel. Okay? It says the turning aside of Israel from the true Yahweh to the worship of idols. Yep. And then let's see. Matter of fact, let's read this one. We'll close out on this one. This is Ezekiel 23 and 37. It says that they that they have committed adultery and blood as in their hands and with their idols. See, once again, Yahweh Shai makes it crystal clear whether it's a, a physical act with a woman. OK, as far as uh, a man. um, Having a uh, a man having uh, an adulterous affair with another man's wife, okay? Or Yahweh Shem Yahusha makes it clear that that adultery of idols, okay, is spiritual initially, and then the acts that are committed make it the fornication because you're becoming intimate with it. It says. This is uh, Ezekiel 23 and 37, that they have committed adultery. It says they have committed, right? Going back to Israel. And blood is in their hands. And with their idols have they committed adultery. And they have also caused their sons whom they bear unto me to pass for them through the fire to devour them. So, so yeah, that's. That's really the, the point of the lesson, you know, um, Lord willing, you know, this was edifying for the elect. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom.